Welcome to the lectures on service management principles. I am Christian Grönros from Hanken School of Economics. The topic of this lecture is the service profit logic and its management implications. Now the profit logic, well, <clears throat> uh, it relates of course to the economic result of the, the firm. And that is a matter how external effectiveness, that is perceived quality, relates to internal efficiency, that is traditional productivity. And how well does the firm to manage these two uh, issues? We can say that the economic result or the profit is revenues minus costs. Of course, capital uh, influences the economic outcome uh, as well, but in this analysis, and in, I, I have omitted capital. What we must keep in mind about mismanagement of capital, even good uh, businesses can be destroyed. Now, in a manufacturing context and in manufacturing management models, the profit logic looks like this, that sales and marketing drives revenues, other business processes drive costs. The only thing that the other business processes have to do is to produce a product that sales and marketing can successfully uh, sell. So it looks fairly straightforward, straightforward. And in this way, it is a straightforward model. Now, if you look at the background or the context of manufacturers and service firms, uh, it looks, or we see clear differences. A, man a managing manufacturing businesses uh, means that internal efficiency, productivity, and external effectiveness, perceived quality, uh, have very few interfaces. And from this follows that the internal can be managed separately from the external. Now, again, if we look at the service context, everything is different. The internal efficiency aspect and the external effective aspect, traditional productivity management and perceived quality management, they just have a lot of interfaces. Let's take uh, the case of the industrial maintenance firm, which I have used earlier on in, in other lectures. Uh, of course, what, what the firm is doing is it's, it's performing maintenance on customers' uh, processes, equipment, machinery in the customer's premises. And uh, there, there's a lot of interactions between mainly the service technicians and people, also processes, also systems representing the customer. And uh, we earlier in other lectures also saw that if, if the maintenance firms did neglect the importance of these interfaces, what in quality terms is called functional quality perception, the customers will perceive total quality in a negative way, and in the end, they will not be prepared to pay for the service, and they will leave. Now, this has to be into, taken into account when understanding how do we get to an economic result in a service business. Now, this, just to remember, was the manufacturing profit logic. The service profit logic looks like this. It looks more complicated. It is more complicated. Of course, sales and uh, conventional marketing like uh, pricing and, and uh, um, marketing communication and so forth drives revenues. But in addition to that, the other business processes also influence the firm's possibilities and capabilities to get revenues. We can divide these other processes into interactive part, support part, and invisible part. The interactive part of processes like research and development, deliveries, maintenance, invoicing, uh, any process, uh, the interactive part uh, 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 that are, are parts where, the, where um, interfaces, interactions between the customer, customer's people, the customer's processes, and the firm and the firm's people and processes uh, occur. 
support part, again, is behind the scene. But the support part in a firm makes it possible for people and pros in the interactive part to handle interactions with customers in a successful way. We could take a restaurant as an example. The interactive part, well, that, that's the restaurant, the room. That's where the waiters work, where the maitre d' works, there where we, 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 we order food, where we are served, where we eat, and so forth. The support part is the kitchen. And the kitchen needs to be able to put together the meal that the waiter uh, has uh, promised the customer that he or she will get. And in a way that, that uh, meets the expectations of the customer. So the thick red arrow here completely changes the profit logic compared to the manufacturing logic. It's a totally different ball game. And um, the interactive parts, the support parts, well, they are part of the interactive marketing process. There are the part-time marketers, some directly interacting with the customers and influencing customers directly, others indirectly influencing the customers through the way they interact with people and processes in firms' interactive part. Now, this has to be taken into account when managing a service business, the thick red arrow, because old models do not function as we used to anymore. Old wisdom has become obsolete and only function partly. Just to make a comparison, again, between the service context and the ma manufacturing context. In the service context, external efficient and external effectiveness and external effectiveness are only partly separable. Whereas we are used to a situation, according to manufacturing models, that internal efficiency and external effectiveness are separate and can, ma can be managed in separate processes. Revenues and costs are largely driven by the same processes in a service business. But we are used to a situation where revenues and costs are driven by separate processes, according to traditional manufacturing management models. And thirdly, internal efficiency and external effectiveness must, as I already said, be managed in integrated processes in service businesses, whereas we are used to integrate them separately in separate processes, to say this once again, according to traditional manufacturing management models. So, the service profit logic and implications of it. Well, I have just listed some of the implications. The threats if we use the wrong logic in a service context. Marketing management, including sales, is different. Brand management is different. Quality management becomes different. Human resource management becomes different. Productivity management requires different approaches and models. Profitability management is different. Offering management is different. Now, in lectures to come, I'm going to uh, go through uh, most of these uh, areas of, of uh, marketing or management. Now, the next uh, lecture will be on service-based marketing and relationship-focused promise management. Thank you.